Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics, components, and resultants, and we are going to be finding the resultant between forces that are shown. And this will be our 16th part in this series. So for this one, we only have two forces. We have a 300 newtons, which is at 60 degrees off the x-axis going up and to the right. And then we also have a 200 newton force that is 20 degrees off the x-axis going up and to the left. And we have to find the resultant that lies between these two forces. So the resultant is just a fancy way of saying, what's the final combination of these two forces? When you put these forces together, where is the final force and how much is that final force? So in order to do this, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at each of these forces individually. So this is the 300 newtons and this will be our 200 newtons. Now, what we're going to do once we break these up into our individual forces here, we are going to take these individual forces and we are going to convert them into X and Y forces. So <clears throat> what we have going on here is that we have an Fy force here and we have an Fx force here just for the 300 newtons, ignoring all the other forces that are on this um, diagram, which would be the 200. That's why it's separated over here. Now, our 300 newtons is going up and to the right. So that means that the Y component will be going upward to match this upward direction. And then the Fx will be going to the right to match this rightward direction. So how do we determine the Fy and the Fx for this 300 newtons? Well, it's basically like completing a triangle here. So if we would have our 300 newtons like this at the same angle it is, we would have our Fx here, and then we would have our Fy over here. And it will always complete a triangle when you're breaking up a force into its Fx and Fy components. And this would be our 60 degrees here. So you kind of treat this like a right triangle, where your forces are your sides of your triangle. So if you know the hypotenuse side and you know the angle off of the hypotenuse, how do you find the Fx and the Fy? Well, your Fx, since it is adjacent to that angle, it would just be the 300 newtons, which is your force, cosine of 60 degrees. Since the 60 is coming off of the X, it is adjacent to the X, so that's cosine. And then your Fy, would be your force of 300 newtons. And this time it will be sine of 60 degrees since the Y is opposite that angle. So let's go ahead and find these out. So 300 cosine of 60 gives us 150 newtons of force to the right. And then 300 sine of 60 gives us 259.81 newtons of force in the upward direction. So basically what I've done is I have taken this 300 newtons and I have split it up. I have split it up into an Fy and an Fx force. And now we're going to repeat the same process for the 200 over here. Since the 200 newtons is going up into the left, that means my Fy will have to be going upward and my Fx will have to be going to the left to match that general direction. And just like what we did with this triangle for the 300 newtons, we have the same kind of situation going on here for the 200 where we would have our 200 here, our Fx here, and our Fy completing that side. And this of course would be our right triangle where this is 20 degrees at this angle. So you would find your Fx and your Fy component forces of the 200 the same way that you would find the 300 before. You just have to watch, out, watch where your angle is being shown from. Well, this one is still off the X, so that means the X will still be working with cosine instead of sine. So our Fx would be 200 newtons cosine of 20, since the angle is off of the X, it is adjacent. And then Fy will be 200 newtons sine of 20 degrees. So the Fx would pop out to be 187.93 newtons, and that will be to the left. And then our Fy will just be 68.40 newtons in the upward direction. Now, you have to make sure that these Fx's and Fy's make somewhat sense. So since it is only 20 degrees off of the Fx, there is more of this 200 that is closer to the X than it is to the Y, because it's 70 degrees away from the Y, so it would take a lot longer for it to get over here. So the distribution should be more of it towards the X because it's more in the horizontal direction. And that is what is represented here by 187 in the horizontal versus only 68 in the vertical. 
So why did I break up these forces into even more forces? Well, what we're going to do is that we're going to take this Fx and Fy and this Fx and Fy, and we're going to sum these forces together in each direction. And we're going to get a final total for each Fx and Fy directions. So let's sum forces in the x direction, and we'll take forces pointed to the right as positive forces, everything pointed to the left as a negative force. So I would have 150 newtons, which would be positive since it's pointing to the right, and then subtracting off 187.93 newtons since it's pointed to the left. And this gives me minus 37.93 newtons, which means that I have 37.93 newtons going to the left as a net force in my x direction. So let's repeat that process for the y. So what this means is that the y I will take up as positive, everything downward as negative. So I will have my y forces. I will have 259.81 newtons upward, so it's positive. And then also plus 68.40 newtons. It is positive since it's going upward. And this gives me a total in the y direction of 328.21 newtons in that upward direction since it came out to be positive. Now, what I have here is I have the sum of all my x's is equal to this to the left, and the sum of all my y forces is equal to this in the upward direction. Now, basically what I've done is I've taken everything that I've done before, and I have minimized it down to just two forces in the x and y direction. So there's my x, there's my y. And what I have going on here is that I have my Fy here of 328.21 newtons in the upward direction. And then I have my Fx force of 37.93 newtons to the left. The resultant will always be between your two final Fx and Fy forces. So that means that my resultant, since this is going up and to the left, that means my resultant force has to be going up and to the left somewhere. So just like what we did before where we took these forces and then broke them up into the X and Y components using this little triangle method, well, we're going to do the reverse of that because now we have the FX and the FY for the resultant force. So we just work backwards here from what we did earlier. So essentially what I have here is I have my summation of my X's here. I have my resultant force right here. And then I have my summation of my Fy's right here. And then this will be my angle off of my x-axis. Well, I know my two legs, so I can find my hypotenuse side, which my resultant is, using the Pythagorean theorem because the Fx and the Fy intersect at a 90 degree angle. So your R, your resultant, will always be this formula if you do this method. So it will be the summation total for your x direction squared plus the summation total for your y direction squared, and then square root it using Pythagorean's theorem. So let's go ahead and just plug these in. So we would have 37.93 squared plus 328.12 squared, and then you square root it. Keep in mind the negative signs really don't mean much here because whenever you square a negative, you get a positive. So you can just plug everything in as a positive number. So this gives us a resultant value of 330.39 newtons. And since my components were going up and to the left, my resultant force has to be going up and to the left. And that would be my combination of my two original forces. So my two original forces, which were 300 and 200, they combine to make a resultant force that looks something like this at 330. So the next thing that we have to do, and the last thing we have to do, is that we have to find the angle off of the x-axis, which would be our alpha that I drew earlier. So the alpha angle will always be this equation. It will be tangent inverse of the summation of the Fy over the summation of the Fx for your final resultant. And this will always give you the angle off of the x-axis. So this will be tangent inverse of Fy, which is 
0.21 newtons divided by the fx, which is 37.93 newtons. And this gives us an angle of 83.41 degrees off of that x-axis. So just to draw out our final result and just to show you what it actually looks like, well, it actually looks like this. If this was our x-axis, this is our y-axis. Our original forces were pointed something like this, where this was 60 and this was 20. Well, my resultant force looks like this. Definitely not drawn the scale, but that's why we've thrown units on and degrees on. So its final value is 330.39 newtons in that upward left direction. And then my alpha angle here off of the X will be 83.41 degrees. You just have to be careful where this is actually measuring because if you were over here with your final result, it would be off this direction. If you were down here, it would be off that direction and so on and so on. So you just gotta be careful which way you are, which quadrant you are in with your degrees there. But that would be your final answer right there. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you wanna see more problem solvers variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel because all that does help us out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.